Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions here today with, with uh, well, oh yeah, Pastor Sutton. That's me. And uh, glad you have time to join us here for a little time in God's Word this morning. I'm dressed kind of casual. It's a uh, a day of appointments this or a morning of appointments for me today. The um, chiropractor and then physical therapy um, right off the bat here not too long after I'm done with you guys I got to start running Bonnie is off she's uh, she's at the um, wives pastor's wives conference down in in Merrill today uh, it takes place today and tomorrow I have the honor of, of going and preaching for those ladies later today at the uh, at st. John and Merrill uh, for their for their uh, divine service at, at four o'clock. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, April 1st, it's also Bonnie's baptismal birthday. Sometimes she looks at me and says, I don't know if it took or not. Was it a prank? <laughs> I'm not big on, on April 1st, 1st pranks. I haven't pulled one in quite some time. I guess I'm probably due to pull one at some point here, but not today, not today. Today we're just going to, to do what we do and spend a little time in, in God's Word uh, to edify and strengthen us for the, for the days ahead, which I think, right, well, I did see a post. Of course, it was a post last year, too. Um, April Fools is canceled because, uh, because this year because um, uh, nothing can beat what's actually going on in the world today. And there's some, some truth to that, so... Let's see who's here with us today. Jerry, good morning. Cloudy over by Yukon. It is bright and sunny here today. Um, weather service says it's 23, but we're headed we're headed for the low 40s today with a real feel in the 50s, uh, which I'm I'm excited about. Um, I don't remember which not spring spring this is. We've already had the spring of deception. Maybe this is fool spring. I'm not sure. But uh, April 1st dawned beautiful this morning. Uh, Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Brenda, good morning. 32 with light snow in Kalamazoo on the first day of April. We'll mark that down. Verna, good morning to you. Jill and John, good morning up there in Rhinelander. Connie, good morning. Why do I get the feeling you won't appear on the screen today? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm no April Fool's jokes. I'm here. Renee, good morning. Oh, jumped on me. Good morning, Renee. Glad you're here. Uh, Snow and Marlette. Jeannie and Bob, good morning. John and Janet, good morning. Hope you made your drive successfully, although maybe you only went part way. And Debbie, good morning. And and watching with with Glenn. Oh, I thought Glenn had headed uh, headed back uh, to. Well, anyway, good morning. Uh, good morning, Glenn and and uh, Deb and. Grant and all, all of you, good morning. Mooshtak, good evening, brother. Glad you're here with us as we look at God's Word today. Well, let's let's go ahead and uh, get into this um, so we can get underway. I, I realized yesterday that from the time, I, the time I went live to the end was almost an hour. Um, to those that didn't appreciate that, I'm sorry. And to those who did, you're welcome. Um, you know what? You're all welcome because it's God's Word and it doesn't matter how long. Let's uh, go ahead and begin, though. If you have a hymnal from uh, an LSB hymnal, Lutheran Service Book, Missouri Synod hymnal, we begin on page 295. Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the Morning Order. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today you know, I'm looking at this, and I don't know if this is what I put down for the psalm in the in the description for today. I guess I can't I can't really tell what it was that I that I put down. Well, it doesn't matter. Here's what it is. I'll I'll check it afterwards. Oh, uh, pancakes. All right, but Psalm 
37, verses 16 through 20. Psalm 37, verses 16 through 20. Better is the little that the righteous has than the abundance of many wicked. Abundance of many wicked. Oh. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the blameless, and their heritage will remain forever. They are not put to shame in evil times. In the days of famine they have abundance, but the wicked will perish. The enemies of the Lord are like the glory of the pastures. They vanish like smoke. They vanish away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hmm, tingly arm today. Better is the little that the righteous has than the abundance of many wicked. There's an application in that. I know the Pastor's Wives Conference theme is Luke chapter 12, and they're looking specifically at the uh, foolish rich man, you know, the one who, uh, who's um, uh, who, who, whose abundance has filled his barn, and he knows not what to do with what, what else he has, that he has more than will fit in the barn. And so he says to himself, I know what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll tear down the barn I have and build a bigger one. And then that night his soul is commanded of him. No one will, will he will not enjoy what he had. And it kind of feels like we're in that time right now where the, the wicked have, there, there are those, uh, I don't want to say the wicked, I'll say there are those who have and those who have not uh, in, in our nation today. Um, and having is not a sin. Having possessions and having wealth itself is not a sin. Money, money and wealth is amoral, right? Uh, if I lay a $10 bill on the counter, it's not going to hurt or offend anybody. Um, it's what happens to it, right? And so the one uh, who gazes upon it uh, can say, oh, there's a $10 bill. I should find out who it belongs to and return it to them. Or they can say, oh, there's a $10 bill. Is there anybody looking? Well, maybe I can put it in my pocket and nobody will notice. Or the one who says, he has, that guy over there has a $10 bill. How can I get it from him? Coveting $10 bill. But if you're happy and content with what you have, and I don't mean happy in a worldly sense. I mean content as we are with what we have in Christ. Then having a little is sufficient. And is better is the little that the righteous has than the abundance of the many wicked, which causes causes them to sin further, and and uh, they will vanish like smoke. Um, the wicked will perish. The enemies of the Lord. We don't live for our possessions. We live for our Lord and to serve one another. It's a good psalm. You may have to go read it in its entirety. Well. Genesis. We're reading in Genesis, continuing with Joseph and his brothers here. Genesis chapter 43, verses 1 through 28. Now the famine was severe in the land. And when they had eaten the grain that they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go again, buy us a little food. But Judah said to him, the man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel said, Why did you treat me so badly? as to tell the man that you had another brother. They replied, 
The man questioned us carefully about ourselves, our kindred, saying, <clears throat> Is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? What we told him was an answer to those questions. Could we in any way know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said to Israel, his father, Send the boy with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and you and also our little ones. I will be a pledge to, of his safety. From my hand you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. If we had not delayed, we would now have returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the choice fruits of the land in your bags and carry a present down to the man, a little balm and a little honey, gum, myrrh, pistachio nuts and almonds. Take double the money with you. Carry back with you the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take also your brother, and arise, go again to the man. May God Almighty grant you mercy before the man, and may he send back your bro other brother and Benjamin. And as for me, if I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. So the men took this present, and they took double the money with them, and, and Benjamin. They arose and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Bring the men into the house, and slaughter an animal, and make, make ready, for the men are to dine with me at noon. The man did as Joseph told him, and brought the men to Joseph's house. And the men were afraid, because they were brought to Joseph's house, and they said, It is because of the money which was replaced in our sacks the first time that we are brought in, that, we, that he may assault us and fall upon us to make us servants and seize our donkeys. So they went up to the steward of Joseph's house and spoke with him at the door of the house and said, O oh my Lord, we came down the first time to buy food, and when we came to the lodging place, we opened our sacks, and there was each man's money in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight. So we have brought it again with us, and we have brought other money down with us to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. He replied, Peace to you. Do not be afraid. Your God... And the God of your father has put treasure in your sacks for you. I received your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them. And when the man had brought the men into Joseph's house and given them water, and they had washed their feet, and when he had given their donkeys fodder, they prepared the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard they should eat bread there. When Joseph came home, they brought into the house to him the present they had with them and bowed down to him to the ground. And he inquired about their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? They said, Your servant, our father, is well. He is still alive. And they bowed their heads and prostrated themselves. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's more to come. Let's focus just on this section of the text. The famine continues. Seven years is what the vision of... of uh... Oh, good morning, praise. Or good evening, actually, for you. Um... Oh, dog, hush. Um, the, the famine continues. The Lord had, had shown Pharaoh in the vision that um, they would continue for seven years. And so it continues. So they, they had come down with grain, and they've eaten it. They've consumed it. So they've, they've been back 
uh, in the land of, of uh, Cana, or the, yeah, the land of Cana for some time with their father, Jacob, Israel. Um, enough time to eat the grain, they had all, all the donkeys. Um, and their father says, okay, guys, it's time. We're, we're running low on food. Go get more. Return, return to Egypt and, and go down to Egypt, go south, down to Egypt, and, and, and buy us more food from the man. But Judah, Judah says, the man solemnly warned us, saying, you shall not see my face again unless you bring with you your brother. Now, Jacob does not want to send Benjamin down there, because if, again, if anything happens to Benjamin, that's, as far as he knows, all his children that he had with Rachel lost, Rachel his love. Judah, interestingly, Judah, who was the one who, when the brothers were deciding what to do, suggested selling Joseph into slavery. Judah says, send him with me. I will be, I will be his security. If anything happens to me, it will be on me. You can require it of my hand. If his life is taken, you may take my life, Father. I will be responsible for him. I will bear the blame forever. Because if we had not delayed, if we have not waited, we could have been to Egypt and back twice. That's how long they have, have remained in Cana. And Israel, probably reluctantly, says, if it must be so, it must be so. Do this. And he tells them to, to gather up items to make an offering to what he thinks is the man, the Lord of the lands of Egypt, not knowing that it's his son, Joseph. Um, fruits, pistachios, balm, honey, gum, myrrh, almonds. These are valuable things in the economy of that time. Put them together. And also, make sure you take the money we were going to spend the first time and money to purchase the next supply of food. Because perhaps it was a mistake that the money was in the stacks. Maybe it was just an oversight. Maybe there was no ill will or misdoings going on. And as for me, Jacob says... If I am bereaved of my children, if my children are taken from me, then so be it. I am bereaved. The will of the Lord be done. So they go. They go and they come before Joseph. And Benjamin is with them. And Joseph instructs his steward to prepare a meal at his house. He will come at noon and eat with these men. But his brothers can only think the worst. They can only think that the, the worst possible thing will come from this. They think that, that Joseph is out now uh, to arrest them, to assault them, to put them to death for what appears to be a theft. Now, why else would we, these 11 brothers, be invited into the Lord's house, the house of, of Joseph, the Lord of the land. Well, they don't know it's Joseph. Remember, he's still going by his Egyptian name. They don't even know that he can speak their language. They don't know he's Joseph. Well, he's going to assault us and kill us and take our money and our donkeys. I'm worried about the donkeys. But they go... And they tell the steward, this is what happened. We, did, we didn't do anything wrong. We got to our first lodging place. We opened our sacks, and there was our money. And the steward says, don't worry about it. Peace be with you. The God of your God and the God of your father has given you money. I received your payment. 
And he did. The steward received the payment, I'm sure. And then Joseph had it placed back in their bags. I received your money. And then he brought Simeon, the brother that had been missing out to them. And they prepare, as noon is coming, they prepare this gift for Joseph. And they bring it into the house. And Joseph sees them. And you know his heart's, to some degree, his heart's got to be breaking. But he's still waiting for true repentance out of these his brothers. But he asks how his how their father is doing. Is he still alive? And they say, Yeah, he's doing doing great. Just, you know, worried about us. He's well. And they bow their heads and prostrate themselves. Which again points back to that vision that Joseph had in his first dream when he was still the child with the wonderful coat of many colors that his father had made for him. Joseph is patient with his brothers, even as they are concerned about their fate. And I think that probably speaks to, to us. Let's take it that way today, at least. Sometimes we know our sins. Our sins are ever before us. That's what David says in Psalm 51. I know my sin. It's ever before my eyes. And we fret over what the result of that sin will be. Will we be cast into the fires of hell? Will we never see God? Will we never be in his presence? Will we be condemned forever for our sins, our misdoings, our errors before God? Who can know, right? But like Joseph with his brothers, God is patient. And he waits for our repentance. Just as these brothers are trying their best to repent. Now, it's not yet time for the Lord. That's many thousand years in the future still. And yet here, here he is that mark of forgiveness. And we're going to see that as we continue through this reading, the forgiveness that Joseph will has for his brothers that God has for us. We can't see it yet because we aren't there. Just like we, we can hear and have faith in the forgiveness of sins that Christ gives us, but we can't see the results of it until the last day. We already have the promise that Christ has given us in his word. That by his blood shed upon the cross, by faith in him, which is given to us in holy baptism, strengthened in word and sacrament, He's already forgiven. He already gives us our daily bread. He already gives us forgiveness. He's already with us, will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. We might forsake him, but he will never forsake us. We have peace with him. Just as the sword said, peace be with you. Right? Isn't that what he said? Peace to you. Do not be afraid. Your God. And the God of your father has put treasure in your sacks, treasure in your life, the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life granted through Christ Jesus. So even as we wonder about our sins and, and where we're at with these things, even as the old wicked foe and his whisper doubt into our ears and remind us of those things, we, like Luther, can turn to that doubt and say, get thee behind me, Satan, as Jesus did to Peter. Your mind is not on the things of God, but on the things of man. Get thee behind me. Yes, Satan, those things of which you accuse me, for you are the great accuser, I am guilty. Guilty as charged. I confess them. Yet Christ has shed his blood for me. And that sin is forgiven. And it's as far from me as the east is from the west. And I have peace with God. And I have the assurance and the comfort of eternal life in Christ Jesus. Now, today, tomorrow, and into eternity. God's patient with us. He waits for our repentance, but he constantly applies the balm of Christ's blood 
and the forgiveness of sins. God grant that to you this day, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Lord God, Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, your servant Moses proclaimed the resurrection to the children of Israel to give them hope in the midst of their darkness. As we journey to the darkness of the cross, give us hope to look beyond it to the light of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In our prayers for ourselves and others on this Friday, the first day of April, I'm going to continue in these additional prayers instead of flipping back to the first week. Father God, Lord of fulfillment, thank you for this Friday, the day in which you completed your creation, crowning it with the presence of human beings. Thank you for the joy of the work that was being carried out during this entire week and for being able to place what I have been doing all week long in a good light. Help me to put forth my best to complete all that I have set out to do this week. I know that with your help, I can accomplish it. In this day, I can value the life you have given me in all of its aspects, physical, emotional, and spiritual. I can do this because this is the day of man's creation in Christ's death. A death so that we have your pardon and peace. May the joy of knowing that I am created and saved by you cause me to live a new life guided by your Holy Spirit. The Lord of this Friday, or Lord of this Friday, stay with me so that we can enjoy this day together. You have thought of me and I also want to think of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And for all those who suffer in body, mind, or soul, Lord God, we ask that you grant them through Christ and by your Holy Spirit comfort, assurance, healing, and remind them always of the grace that they have in your Son. Especially today we pray for those who have asked for our prayers. Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, Brianne, and all those who call upon your most holy and gracious name, grant them all your favor, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven for those who call upon you and trust in your word. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that concludes our Friday morning devotions on this Friday, April 1st. God's peace and blessing be with you today. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for our regularly scheduled daily devotions. Be Saturday. God's peace be with you.